Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me today at the Punlo Coffee Table. Even if you've been a Christian for a long time, there are just some things in the Bible or in our Christian traditions that are confusing. I know there's a lot that I don't understand and I've struggled with for years. And we want to ask those tough questions and then do the research and see if we can find or develop a better understanding of why. Uh, what is going on with these tough questions? So, what do you know about how the Roman soldiers mocked Jesus before his crucifixion? Well, part of this was that they put a robe of some color on Jesus and a, a crown of thorns. Uh, John 19.2 says they put on him a purple robe. Matthew 27, 28 says they put a scarlet robe on him. Mark 15, 17 says they clothed him in purple. And Luke doesn't have an account of this. So, did you notice something when I read those three scriptures? Well, John and Mark say purple robe or sash, and Matthew says scarlet. And I don't know about you, but scarlet and purple are not the same color. And this is a discrepancy in the Bible. And all I can say is, well, sh surely not. There can't be a discrepancy in the Bible. So let's pray and see what we can find. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your good news in the Bible, for the sacrifice you made for us and for this amazing book that you've given us. Thank you for the Helper, the Holy Spirit, who helps us to understand the words you've had written in this book for us. Help us to keep our minds open to whatever the message is you have for us today so that we can get a better understanding of these tough questions so that when people ask us, we can say, yeah, yeah, well, we completely understand where you're coming from, but this is what it means. And I pray all these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I don't know if we'll get to that with this one today, but scarlet or purple? Yeah, which is it? There has got to be a reason for this. That's, that's my premise. And as we start this, there's got to be a reason that two Gospels say purple and one says scarlet. So let's look at each more closely and keep it in context so we can see if we can decipher what's going on. I'm going to read John first, John 19, verses 1 to 6. I'm going to read out of the New American Standard today. So Pilate then took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and put a purple cloak on him. And they repeatedly came up to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! and slapped him in the face again and again. And then Pilate came out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you so that you will know that I find no grounds at all for your charges in his case. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. So when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they shouted, saying, Crucify! crucify. And Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him, or for I find no grounds for charges in this case. Sorry, I had a little trouble reading that. Uh, the Greek words translate in verse 2 and 5 as purple cloak. I'm going to show them on the screen uh, so I don't butcher them too badly. Purple is porphyrune which means purple, and imitation, or imitation maybe, it's an it's a outer garment. So a purple outer garment, a cloak, a robe, that's what the Greek is, is telling us. So John means purple outer garment of some sort, a purple robe, purple cloak, something like that. So let's see what Mark is saying. Mark 15, 16 through 20. Now the soldiers took him away into the palace 
And they called together the whole Roman cohort, and they dressed him in purple, and twisted together a crown of thorns, and put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they repeatedly beat him with a reed, and spit on him. And kneeling, they bowed down before him. And after they had mocked him, they took the purple cloak off him and put on his own garments, and they led him out to be crucified. I do apologize. I have a little trouble reading uh, the scriptures surrounding the mocking and beating of Jesus. It, it, it just makes me a little emotional, and I apologize. So the Greek words translated in verse 17 as dressed in purple are, again, they're on the screen, is endiko usko yusin and perforon which is again purple so it's uh, clothed in purple is what it means in Greek so verse 20 just says uh, eskadon perforon was so they took off the purple so both Mark and John mean purple uh, that's what the word means it's said two times in both of the gospels it's purple so purple outer garment of some sort. So let's go ahead and let's look at Matthew and see what Matthew says. Matthew was very particular in his word choices and that's important for us to understand. So when we look at the Gospel of Matthew, the words matter. In Matthew 27, 27 through 31, again from the New American Standard. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the Praetorium, and gathered the whole Roman cohort to him, and they striped him, and put a red cloak on him, and after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand, and they knelt down before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him, and took the reed, and beat him on the head and after they had mocked him they took the cloak off him and put his own garments back on and led him away to be crucified okay so it was a red cloak um, the NIV the New Living Transmission I should say the New, Interla in New International Version the New Living Translation the English Standard Version, the New King James, the Amplified, and about 22 other translations say scarlet. Uh, three English translations I could find said crimson cloak, and then the uh, New American Standard uses the word red. But all those are some variation of red. So Matthew meant red. The Greek words translated as scarlet cloak are Kokinen and Kalamud, which is a scarlet cloak. Uh, this word kokis is a, it means crimson or scarlet, but it, it literally means dyed from the Kirkimus oak. And this dye, from what I understand, is this deep, dark red, and it was used. Uh, for Roman cloaks. Uh, so both the cocos and the coquinon are, are, are referring to this dye. So Matthew is no doubt referring to a red cloak very similar to the ones that the Romans wore. So this is not very satisfying I have to admit. So I, I look purple and scarlet uh, these these colors don't agree and one thing to think about is they're both considered royalty colors uh, purple and scarlet that is in Revelation 17 4 18 12 18 16 they're symbolizing the adornment of, of the royal adornment of Babylon but I don't think that's what this is talking about the question is why is this discrepancy there between Mark and John and Matthew. Well, I have to admit I don't know. 
the only account in John was Jesus wearing the purple robe when he was presented to the crowd after being tortured. The accounts in Mark and Matthew, the robe of scarlet and the, the robe of purple are removed when Jesus after Jesus was beaten and then he's led out to be crucified. So they have no account of him being represented to the crowd. So I decided to do what I don't like to do, and that's look at commentaries to see what other people think about this. And I found uh, very little useful information, I'll be honest. There are a lot of opinions out there. Some say that neither color was used. It's just symbolism being used by John, Mark, and Matthew. And I, I don't really agree with that. I heard some authors that thought this was a vantage point issue and that from from Mark and John's perspective it was purple, but from Matthew's perspective it was maybe scarlet. Um, it's just about vantage point. And it, that could be true, but none of those that I think were very uh, satisfying. And I ran across a website, and I'm not endorsing them, I don't know anything about them, but I, I liked what this author said. It's answersingenesis.org. And they have a whole bunch of uh, articles on contradictions or supposed contradictions in the Bible. And the author, uh, his name was Troy Lacey, and he titled the article, was either Matthew or John colorblind? And I thought that was very intriguing. So it, it, it made me want to read it. So I did. And he gave a very plausible explanation for this and one that I had not seen in myself. And that is the red cloak or a calamus, or chalamus, I don't know how it's pronounced exactly, was most likely the typical Roman officer's sash that we see. You know, we see TV programs from this area. You see this, this red, uh, what they call a short cloak, draped between their shoulders in the back. And that, that was there so they could pull it up over their head and cover their face if it was sandy or windy or, or what have it. It, was, it wasn't down in the way so they could still fight and, and wear it. So that's what a short cloak was. And a calamus means short cloak. So I believe Matthew is talking about a short red cloak like the ones that the Romans wore. Uh, now, on the other hand, the himation, or however you want to pronounce it, is a robe. It's an outer garment. It's a, it's a bigger garment. And so in John and Mark, they're talking about a purple robe, not this short cloak. So they're very different descriptions. And I think it's very likely and very possible that during his beating, he had part of the mocking, they put this short cloak on him, and then uh, they found a purple robe, and they gave him the reed, and the crown of thorns, and bowed down and mocked him. Uh, with the robe on, and then that robe was still on him when he went out to be presented to the high priests and the and the crowd the second time with Pilate, and then was removed before he was taken to be executed and crucified. So it is possible that they're both true, that first the scarlet short cloak, and then later in the mocking the purple robe was used. I, I don't know if this is true but honestly it's a it's a plausible explanation and it's one that actually I found pretty encouraging because it eliminates this apparent discrepancy in the Bible and all I can say is amen to that let me read you a prayer Father God thank you for giving us the resources and sources to answer these tough questions we know you know all things and when we see how things fit perfectly together in your plan, it's all I can say is, wow. Only with God is it possible. And thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit to guide us and help us. And help us to open the Bible and look into history and to answer these tough questions that we have. And I pray all these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So, uh, 
Let me leave you with this. I don't know if this is true, okay? Uh, and it doesn't matter. If it was purple or scarlet or both, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't change what happened in the story. Uh, it does not change what Jesus did for me on the cross. And whether this is perspective and inaccurate recording due to eyewitnesses, which happens all the time, or whether this is different details recorded from different points in time and are both true, uh, it does not affect the inerrancy of Scripture. Uh, you can't look at this and say, oh, the Scripture is invalid because one says scarlet, one says purple. There are valid, plausible explanations for why that is and it doesn't matter jesus died for me he died for you and that's the point of the story and we need to stay focused on that when we're looking at these odd little things i think for me this was one of those aha moments it's like wow you really could have been two different cloaks just seen at two different times by two different men and that gives me uh, a reason to be joyful in reconfirming that the Bible is so authentic to capture those kind of details just like it was. And when we read the different Gospels, we can see these different perspectives and we can get a fuller, more complete understanding of what's going on. Now, this detail doesn't affect the big picture, but it, it does make me smile to see a potential uh, answer to what was a really tough question. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'm really thankful that you joined me here at the Punla Coffee Table again. Uh, your time is valuable, and I appreciate you sharing some of that time with me. If you like the message, press like, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified next time we put up content. I am going to keep trying to address these tough questions, and if you have any, send me an email. My email should be on the screen and I will look into it and see what we can find together. I don't promise to have the answers. I am just like you, but I will spend the time and I'll do the research and I'll show you what I found and where I found it. And then hopefully that will help you get a better understanding and together we'll grow in this process. So I really appreciate your time and until next time from the Pungal Coffee Table, God bless.